Hey, what's up everybody? This is Osterberg501 and today I want to go over a caster build that I think is the best AoE build in New World. Now I mainly created this build to do some AoE mob grinding, but I did figure out that this is incredibly strong in PvP wars and the AoE damage can be pretty incredible and I'm going to have some footage of me in a war where I ended up getting second place and I think I did the highest damage damage in that war. Now we are going to be using the Ice Gauntlet and the Fire Staff for this build. Now I want to go over the Fire Staff first because depending on what I'm doing, either AoE mob grinding or going to be in a bigger AoE situation like a war, I'm going to have two separate builds. So this build right here is the build I've been using in wars. And I'm going to try to go through this pretty quickly because it's going to take a while to go through all these different builds. So first off for the passives, we have increased critical damage with a Fire Staff. You have an extra 15 percent chance to critical hit when you critical hit you cause burning dealing three percent of your weapon damage every second for six seconds and then for our ultimate once we cast a fire spell it creates a rune under us that gives us 30 percent increased spell damage for seven seconds on a 30 second cooldown then we also deal 10 percent increased damage while above 50 percent mana then we have pillar of fire that's just an aoe you cast on the ground that does damage and then we do 40 percent more damage to foes at full health then we have fireball we throw a fireball that does damage if it direct hits then leaves a pool of fire on the ground for six seconds that deals 10% of your weapon damage every second then we make the burning field that gets left on the ground last for nine seconds and then if we directly hit with this fireball we get 10% of our mana back and reduce our fire staff cooldowns then we have meteor shower which is a big aoe we cast that constantly rains down fire that deals damage then we get mana back for the initial hit for each target's hit then we add grit to meteor shower so we can't be stuck staggered or interrupted out of it then we do a 25 percent increase damage after the initial hit of the entire meteor shower and this is going to be the build that i use in war when using the fire staff it's mainly going to be focused on supplementing our ice staff and doing as much aoe damage as possible now this build is what i would be using if i was solo or aoe mob grinding and the fire staff when i'm doing content like that is mainly Mainly a supplement for our ice gauntlet. So first off for the passives, heavy attacks reduce our fire staff cooldowns. Then we have while above 50% mana, you deal 10% increased damage. Then when we critical hit, we deal a percent of our weapon damage every second for six seconds. Then we deal 20% increased damage when we're below 50% health. Then whenever our burn deals damage, we gain a 10% fortify. Then when we're struck, we create a field of fire around us, dealing 5% weapon damage to all nearby enemies. Last for 10 seconds has 120 second cooldown then when we activate a fire staff ability we gain 10 percent haste for five seconds with a cooldown of 10 seconds then for our abilities we're actually only using two we have incinerate which has an aoe around us that deals a good chunk of damage and then also applies a burn to target that deals damage over time. Then we increase the stacks of burning from this ability. Then we heal for 20% of the damage dealt as health. This can be really good when hitting a bunch of targets. We could just full heal ourselves. Then our incinerate now hits twice. So it now doubles the amount of damage this could potentially do. Then we're using burnout. We just do a charge forward that passes through all enemies, which is really good for relocating and getting out of sticky situations. And it applies burn to everything and does damage to enemies we pass through then we reduce our cooldowns for every enemy hit by our burnout ability and then burnout goes 50 percent further so we can pass through more enemies and have an easier time relocating like i said this build is more focused on being a supplement for a way mob grinding or doing solo stuff then for our ice gauntlet i'm actually using the same build for both wars and aoe mob grinding and just doing solo stuff this is pretty much a build i would use for any content i'm doing so for the passives we have increased speed by 10 percent when in a frosted area and reduces all active cooldowns by 20 percent when casting an ability in a frosted area then we have increased damage of heavy and light attacks 
for far away enemies. Then we restore 15 mana after triggering a critical hit on anything. Then we increase our critical damage of ice spells by 50% when at full stamina. And then we get mana back when we hit three consecutive targets with a light attack. Then we increase our critical chance if we're hitting an enemy in a frosted area or that was hit by frostbite. Then our heavy attacks will freeze a target if they're in ice storm or if they're affected with frostbite, which can be incredibly strong. We can stun lock some targets if we use this effectively and I've definitely been pretty bad at using this effectively so I have to get better with using heavy attacks with this. Then we have ultimate chill. Ice abilities, chill targets, increasing ice damage by 35% for three seconds which is just an incredibly big damage buff. So for our main ability we have ice storm. We just create a AoE ice storm that deals a bunch of damage every 0.25 seconds and then it slows all enemies in the area. It's a frosted area and it has a five second duration then we make enemies take more damage in our ice storm our ice storm costs less mana and then we deal 10 percent increased damage for every enemy in the ice storm and this is probably the most important talent not only for aoe mob grinding but also for getting massive damage increases when in a 50 v 50 war and placing it on a big group of players then we have ice shower which you essentially just create a line of frost now this applies frost enemies it roots enemies it blocks sprinting and dodging it slows them by 50 percent and that stuff will also apply for three seconds after they leave the ice shower and it lasts for four seconds we increase the duration to seven seconds if allies or yourself run three you get a 25 percent speed boost and then frostbite applies rend to targets reducing their defense by 10 percent then finally we have entombed which you entomb yourself for 10 seconds and you're unable to take damage now entombed can be broken with damage from enemies and then you can also left click to break out and do damage around you for 20 mana now something to also note with ice shower and with frigid showers there is a perk that turns ice shower into a really high damaging ability so if i go to my weapons i have frost wall which is from the 45 dungeon the depths and this has the perk on it deadly frost frigid showers ability will cause damage to enemies with frostbite so that that is the talent we just went over and essentially how this works is you place down this frost wall that roots enemies slows them allows them to not dodge or roll and if you use this against any targets that are trying to move so any pve mobs any players if they're trying to move out of your frost wall they'll just continuously take damage very quickly and you'll see in the footage especially when i'm doing the aoe mob grinding this does a ridiculous amount of damage this can almost do as much damage as your ice storm ability and like i said you'll see in the footage just how much damage this perk can do so next up we have our attributes now the first thing you want to do is get constitution to 100 which makes your consumables heal you for 20 percent more so for potions and food which is really strong and then the second bubble gives you 10 percent increased max health based off of your physical armor so a bunch of increased health is also really good and then for me after i get 100 constitution i pump everything else into intelligence for more damage and then also all the perks from the bubbles now if you feel like you're dying too quickly you can put more in a constitution but with a caster range build like this i would recommend just playing more safe and learning to dodge abilities more effectively and for the bubbles for intelligence our light and heavy attacks deal 10 percent more damage we have a 10 percent to critical hit damage we have a 15 percent increase to elemental damage which is pretty much just all of our damage and the most important bubble you can possibly get for a caster build is you gain 10 mana after a dodge this has no cooldown and you can just spam dodge as much as you want if you have the stamina for it and constantly get 10 mana every time. This pretty much makes it so you don't have to worry about ever not having mana if you keep up with dodging constantly. Then we have a 30% duration to damage over time spells which with our fire staff can deal a ton of additional damage. Now first off for gearing with our weapons I do have pretty good weapons so first off for my fire staff it's a little low gear score for me now but it's still pretty good intelligence roll critical chance meteor deals additional damage to full health targets for the ice gauntlet like i already went over this thing is incredibly strong intelligence critical chance critical damage and then the deadly frost perk which 
if you're going for anything on your ice gauntlet, get the Deadly Frost perk. Like I mentioned, it can do a massive amount of damage. Then for our armor pieces, the only thing I went for is intelligence. We have intelligence on all of these pieces, and I really didn't go for any other specific perks. So mainly just get as high as intelligence as you can. And also I keep myself in light equip load so I can get the increased damage. I can keep the dodge roll so I can dodge roll cancel, which if you don't know what that is, if you sheath unsheath your weapon or switch weapons while rolling it removes the stop at the end of rolls to make your movement much faster then for our jewelry i just have constitution on my necklace i have constitution on my earring and then i also get some better mana regen and more health when i drink a mana potion then for the ring i would recommend going and getting this weaver's knot when you're leveling up this gives constitution so you're tankier and that gives two rolls of luck which can massively help with getting gear upgrades and getting some more rare gear drops but for the jewelry neither of these are really that great it's kind of just putting on what i get until i hit max level and can start prioritizing getting specific gear pieces so that's pretty much the entirety of this build. Like I mentioned, I mainly use this for AOE mob grinding and also doing the big 50v50 wars for attacking or defending settlements. And this is easily one of the best AOE builds for both of that content. So subscribe if you want to see more New World or other MMO videos. Leave a like if you liked the video. Leave a comment down below what you guys think about this caster build. And thanks for watching.